Hey guys, Sydney here. So Sandmark just came out with a brand new anamorphic lens and it's right over here. And this is the version for the iPhone XR and it is pretty dang cool. Now I gotta be honest, I've never shot with uh, an anamorphic lens before, not for mobile phones, not for actually for a real camera, but I did have some time playing with this lens and shot some pretty cool things. And what I love most about this lens is that sweet anamorphic lens flare that you get to see in the footage. And so for today's video, I'm gonna give you five tips on how to create that sweet looking anamorphic lens flare. So the first thing that you're gonna have to do is attach the anamorphic lens to your phone. Now I have the iPhone XR, and the really cool thing that Sandmark does is that they include the phone case in the anamorphic lens package. And so this is the case for the iPhone XR. And once you attach the case to your phone, just take the anamorphic lens and just screw it on the back. All right, so tip number one, you have to make sure that your anamorphic lens is aligned properly. I know I said before that I've never played with an anamorphic lens. That was a lie. I did play with it before with an FS5, but that was like a very DIY anamorphic lens. Basically, it was a projector from a movie theater and we just kind of jerry this little thing. You know what, I'm, that's a story for another time. Regardless, you're gonna have to align your anamorphic lens properly. Otherwise, you're going to distort your image. After you screw in the anamorphic lens onto the phone case, there is a little white line on the lens itself. There's also a line on the phone case and all you have to do is simply align those two lines together and that way, you know that your anamorphic lens is aligned properly. This also helps control the direction of the lens flare. And so even though it may look aligned when you film a scene and it looks kind of weird or wonky, you can simply adjust it by turning it left or right. And then you can look on your screen to make sure that your lens flare looks right. Okay, tip number two, you wanna make sure that your main light source is at the right angle. If you are filming outdoors, then the sun obviously is the main light source. And so you wouldn't wanna film at noon or midday when the sun is straight up in the sky. I mean, unless you're shooting a skyscraper, it'd be very difficult to align an object in your scene along with the sun to create that lens flare effect. It would be a lot easier if the sun was lower. And so I would suggest filming in the morning or in the evening at golden hour. Everything's better at golden hour. Same rules apply if you're filming at night or indoors. Most likely you'll create a lens flare from a street lamp if you're filming outdoors downtown or even a flashlight if you're doing one of those, you know, spy scenes. Either way, whether you're filming day, night, interior, exterior, you wanna make sure that the angle of the light is at an appropriate angle so that it makes it easier for you to film those lens flares. Tip number three, stabilization. Now, when I say stabilization, I don't necessarily mean using a gimbal, although it's very helpful to use a gimbal for any situation. But what I'm trying to say is that you don't want your footage to look shaky. If you are filming handheld and you're trying to create some lens flares, then you might see a lot more shakiness in the lens flare versus using a tripod or some sort of stabilizer like a gimbal. Fortunately, with the app that I'm using, Filmic Pro, there is a camera stabilization feature and it's actually really good. And so here's an example of a shot without stabilization and here's the same shot with stabilization. Tip number four, you wanna transition your lens flares. I really like to film scenes where I either make the lens flare appear or disappear. It just makes for a more authentic and organic feel when you're introducing a lens flare. Now, your lens flare doesn't have to be super epic and J.J. Abrams status, but when you move your camera around, especially at different angles, you'll get to see different types of shapes of, of lens flares, whether they're big or small or even very subtle. I actually much prefer the very subtle lens flares because it just looks more authentic to me. Now, I know lens flares have this very block buster over the top look and I think that's because when it's overused it will look over the top and cheesy but if you use it in the right way in the right context and transition them whether into the scene or out of the scene then I believe you create this really organic product that makes the lens flares a part of the scene and not just add it on to it and last but not least tip number five you have to ask yourself does it make sense? Does it make sense to have a lens flare in your scene? Now, I'll be the first to admit that I have used digital plugins to add lens flares to my scenes, but it just wouldn't make any sense. I used to shoot weddings back in the day and I would add a lens flare during the ceremony scene inside the church. That doesn't make any sense. I mean, where is the main light source coming from? I mean, there isn't a bright enough light source to produce any type of lens flare inside a building. <laughs> I just did it because I wanted it to look cool, but it was oh, it's terrible. If you're the couple watching, I'm, I'm so sorry. I was, I was in a phase. I was in a phase. But you have to ask yourself, does the lens flare fit the scene? Now, your reasoning may be just to make your scene look cool, and that's totally fine. But if you are gonna do that, then, then don't overdo it. You don't wanna add a lens flare to every scene. It would just get really annoying. Filmmaking is all about the cadence of a story, the pacing of an edit, the ebb and flow of the highs and lows of a scene, the wide shots mixed with the close-ups to a dolly shot to whatever. And so whatever you're filming, whether it's travel, weddings, or a narrative film, 
don't use anamorphic lens flares for every scene. Sprinkle it every now and then, but you wanna make sure that it fits the story. And so make sure to ask yourself, does it make sense to have a lens flare in the scene? <laughs> okay, well, that's all I got for you guys. Hopefully that was helpful to you. Big thanks to Sandmark for sending me this anamorphic lens. I'm definitely gonna be shooting with this a lot more. I was really surprised to see how really well the, the footage came out using this anamorphic lens. So thanks for that. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Much love to you all, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.